Hello everyone, Junk Shop here, and welcome to my Beginner's Guide to Fallen Earth Part 1. If you need a more basic how to play guide, then I recommend playing Fallen Earth's tutorial all the way through, and or reading all of the game's help tips. If you'd prefer to watch those instructions, then I've also uploaded a separate video doing exactly that. Link in the description. In Part 1 of my Beginner's Guide, we'll discuss the following subjects. Character Build Basics Combat Skills and Mutations Crafting And Buffs Let's start with character build basics. We spend advancement points inside the attribute window to create our build. Advancement points, or AP, are earned four ways. Three points are awarded every time we gain one-tenth of a level, so you'll acquire most just playing the game normally. Some missions grant AP as a reward. You can find a list of many of these missions on the Fallen Earth Wiki. Late game AP injectors give five points each and can be purchased or gifted from other players, but they're often rather expensive. Lastly, single APs drop randomly while logged on, so you could potentially just leave the game running and build APs slowly, but effortlessly. Don't worry about gaining as much AP as possible though, because there's a limit to how much we can spend for each level, and one can never have every ability in the game. Before we start spending AP, it helps to use one of the Fallen Earth community's build planners. Each one keeps track of your maximum available AP, and displays how many APs one spends to acquire the various abilities. Links to them are in the description. The Attributes window is divided into four tabs, but we only spend AP in the first three, Stats, Skills, and Mutations. The fourth tab, Trade Skills, describes our character's crafting levels. These raise automatically as we use them, and we'll go over them shortly. For this beginner's guide, we'll focus on the most important skills and mutations, then give a brief summary of the rest. When we first begin our characters, it's most important to focus on the Skills tab, as nearly all characters need three skills, Armor Use, First Aid, and at least one of the three main weapon skills. We'll start with Armor Use. There are many armor slots for our characters, and each piece grants its own resist boosts, but the Armor Use skill gives a general increase to our defenses up to 15%. In this example, I've yet to spend any AP at all on this level 5 character. The maximum I can spend on each skill depends on the stats. Since all my stats are only 15, the maximum level for any skill is 30, or twice the stats. If I increase the armor use to 30, then I'll get a 9% increase to my resists. To get the full 15% increase, I need to raise the maximum skill level. If you look at the right side of the window, you'll see the two stats that control armor use skill, coordination and endurance. Their influence is not an evenly split 50-50 like some other skills, but a 75-25 split in favor of endurance. This means that if I increase Endurance alone, then I'll get a greater boost than if I increased Coordination alone, but to get the maximum, I'll need to increase both. If I raise both of their max to 23, then the Armor Use skill raises to 46, or twice the stat amounts. Also, thanks to Armor Use favoring Endurance, I can actually spend fewer AP on Coordination and still get the average amount up to 46. I should be able to get away with 2 points shy of Coordination's maximum. Sometimes the game will mess up the math and give a slightly smaller maximum, but this is fixed with the relog. Armor use is now a maximum of 46, and when I spend the AP to reach it, then I get the remaining 6% added to my resists. Now that we know how to increase our skills, let's discuss our priorities. Fallen Earth is all about combat and crafting. When we first begin the game, we're provided basic weapons for the three main combat types, melee, pistol, and rifle. Newer players are highly recommended to toy around with each of these combat types to determine their own preferences, because weapons beyond these starters require skill stat investments for full damage. Weapons include their attack skill amount in their descriptions, and while each weapon skill includes some abilities and passive benefits, one should prioritize having enough skill to get full damage out of their weapons. While characters can invest in more than one combat type, it's recommended each character only choose one so as to save AP for other abilities. Rifle users get to enjoy sniping their enemies from a distance and boast some of the highest burst damage using shotguns in close range, but the better weapons are slower to fire and users are the most vulnerable to nimble opponents. Pistol users boast the highest damage per second, and if you're a good shot then you'll demolish the game, but pistols chew through ammunition and nimble opponents once again can ruin your day. Melee requires no ammunition and users enjoy a larger reticle, thus land hits easier so nimble opponents are less of a concern, but you'll need high defense and good healing abilities to offset damage sustained getting close to opponents and to counter the hazards of PvE combat, or player versus environment. Speaking of PvE combat, the NPCs of Fallen Earth use a sort of auto-aim system, dodging them is impossible. 
Their damage and likeliness to hit or miss is based entirely on stats. You're almost always better off standing your ground and trading blows. If you must get away to heal, retreat to a spot out of their sightline. Also, be aware each enemy has a tether and will return to their starting area if you run away far enough, but this also resets any damage they took. PvP combat, or player versus player, is another style entirely, and extremely nuanced, so we'll discuss that in another video. While a few of Fallen Earth's other skill values have passive benefits, most are just for unlocking the game's various abilities. For example, most characters need first aid skill to acquire the Staunch Wound and Resuscitation abilities. New Staunch Wound levels only become available at 36, 66, 96, 126, 156, and 186, so don't spend other amounts unless you really want first aid's other abilities. To be more accurate, raising skills allows us to learn their abilities. Once you've spent enough AEP to learn abilities, you'll need to purchase them from NPC trainers. Now that we've discussed the most important skills, we're on to mutations. First, I want to direct your attention to the influential attributes. Notice all mutations include a 25% influence from willpower. This is why experienced players all say AP spent on willpower is wasted. At max level, one can raise mutations all the way to 180 without spending anything on willpower. Those extra 16 points aren't worth it. No mutation has passive benefits, so only spend enough AP to get the abilities you want in your build. For example, Empathic is standard in most builds, as it's the mutation version of First Aid. Its two healing abilities, Benevolence and Restoration, heal allies twice as effectively as oneself, so cross-healing within a team is heavily incentivized. Preservation removes negative status effects, and Share Life revives other players. Share Life works faster than Resuscitation too, but it costs your own health to use. The remaining skills and mutations are for you to decide on. If you want higher defense and more hit points, then check out Escape Artist, Enhancement, and Primal. Maybe dodge too, but rather than reducing normal damage, it reduces the chance of receiving critical attacks. Team healers use nano manipulation. Social improves merchant prices, but doesn't show much benefit until late game. Player versus player builds need to invest in the higher damage output granted from power and precision, the armor cutting abilities of dirty tricks, group tactics, and telekinesis, or the debuffs from patho transmission, sonic influence, and suppression. Heavy Weapons allows the use of rocket launchers and high-end grenades, but doesn't unlock until level 40. Last, you can get some direct damage abilities from Sonic Influence, Telekinesis, and Thermal Control, but they'll never replace your main weapons because they don't do enough damage and we're limited by our gamma amount. The final build note is our maximum trade skills, or crafting maximums, are based on intelligence and perception. While missions do provide some items and equipment, you'll get most of your better stuff through crafting. We level trade skills by crafting items near a trade skills level. For example, one can craft ragged bandages at the start of the game to improve the medicine trade skill, but the requirement is so low that characters will quickly stop gaining skill from it. The number of times one can craft an item to level a trade skill varies slightly, but 30 units is the standard for most items. For example, an iron fire poker requires 15 weaponry skill to craft, and one can craft 30 of them to increase the weaponry skill up to 45. I recommend crafting good items and gear for yourself, but crafting resource cheap items when just increasing your skill because few crafted items sell well. The easy way to tell if items will level your trade skill is by going to the filter in the upper right corner of the recipes window and checking hide no skill gain. You can also check hide above skill to reduce clutter. You can also tell what items currently level your trade skill by their skill value's color. Red is above your current skill, white increases your skill and gives a decent amount of experience, Green increases skill, but gives very little, if any, experience, and gray neither increases skill or grants experience. Crafting experience is usually very little, but items that take longer to craft usually grant more experience. In this example, a level 12 character has crafted vehicle repair kits and ATV parts. The character's science trade skill is 30, or just high enough to craft said items. Each time I click to complete an active recipe, then the science trade skill will increase by one point, and I'll receive some experience. But you'll notice the vehicle repair kits, which only take a few minutes to craft, grant a small amount of experience, while the ATB parts that take hours to craft grant uh, as much experience as some missions. Since crafting continues even when logged off, one can just set up a crafting list and leave, and return later and pick up their goods and experience. Leveling your trade skills is only half the battle, though. We still need to acquire recipes, and Fallen Earth has a large selection. Basic starter recipes are bought from NPC trainers, but many others can't be bought. 
Improved and advanced recipes must be crafted using paper, pen, and various research ingredients. Some recipes are granted through missions, and the most valuable late game recipes are either purchased with different currencies or are rare drops from certain enemies. Last up for this video, we'll discuss buffing your character. Fallen Earth's buffs are referred to as effects, and players have a list of slots for effects. Debuffs are also included in effects, but I'll only go over the positive ones in this video. If we attempt to use two effects that use the same slot, then only the higher level one will go into effect. When starting a new character, one has access to Commander Aura, Staunch Wound, Food, Drink, Consumable, Alpha Mutation, Primal Vigor, Rest, and Auras. Commander Aura is a permanent buff given to all players in the current version of the game. It was originally a reward for a Fallen Earth monthly subscription, but it's free for now. The Staunch Wound buff is added whenever the matching ability is used and increases our health regeneration. Food, drink, and consumable are all obtained using items. Foods increase health regeneration and many have secondary effects. Drinks increase stamina regeneration and many too have secondary effects. Consumables vary a lot, granting more health or increased running speed or a range of other stat boosts. The two alpha mutation buffs, GERD and Bolster, each increase stats in exchange for reducing maximum gamma. Primal Vigor increases maximum health in exchange for reducing maximum gamma by half, and we only have access to the training version until level 15. After that, one has to invest AP into Primal to use it. Rest is acquired by entering a bunker bar and simply waiting, increasing up to 5 tiers for every minute we spend in the bar. Rest increases experience gain, so it's vital when leveling. Rest also increases saving throws, which affect a character's resistance to secondary attacks like poisons and snares. Next are auras. Each player can only use one aura at a time, but receive auras from other players in the same team. We start with three training auras, offensive coordination, calibration, and meditation. These disappear beyond level 15, then one has to spend AP to use them, and since characters can only use one at a time, then avoid investing AP into too many. Sadly, we don't have immediate access to the remaining buffs at the start of the game, but you'll want to use them as you level up. Similar to auras, stances function one at a time. We have ten options. Most increase weapon abilities and are great for saving AP on character builds. The two from armor use and one from enhancement increase defense, and while duck and weave from dodge states it reduces damage, it's never worked in my own tests. The only one to increase damage dealt, suppressive fire under heavy weapons, only works on its own damage type. The next buff type is camp, and it sports a large variety of effects similar to consumable. One obtains a buff by placing down a camp of some kind and standing near them, with effects increasing as you stay longer. You'll find camp recipes under the construction trade skill after you've bought them from trainers. The remaining two buffs, Territory Control and Dangerous Mutations, are for later in the game. Territory Control can't be obtained until one joins a faction in Sector 2, and Dangerous Mutations don't unlock until the maximum of level 55. Technically, there are more buffs, but they're either unavailable, seasonal, or one-time use. This concludes Part 1 of my Fallen Earth Beginner's Guide. Join me in part 2 to learn about maximizing experience gain, mission efficiency, mount variety, using the auction house and auction chat, getting the most out of your chips, screen layout, and keybinding. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you out in the wastes.